Hello, beautiful internet family. My name is Dan Davis, and I'm the creative director at danstube.tv, as well as the Fearless Drone Academy, which is the ultimate online drone course for beginners. And today I'm exploring the Lychee Waypoint mode for the DJI Air 2S. I've been covering a lot of Lychee content on my channel recently. I just didn't have a chance to check out the Air 2S. I was testing the Mini 2 and the Mini SE because that's just the most exciting thing to me that these mini drones now have waypoints and following modes and all these fun things that just weren't there from the get-go. But with the Air 2S, we already had the active track mode, which is a very reliable following or tracking mode built into the DJI Fly app. But the one thing they didn't have is waypoints mode. So I thought I would dive into the waypoint mode here in Lychee to see how the Air 2S could handle this awesome new feature. One thing I didn't thoroughly test with the Mini 2 and the Mini SE is adjusting the speed setting for each waypoint. Now this actually caused a lot of juddery movement and awkward movement for the Mini 2 and the Mini SE. And this is the same for all of the different apps that I've tested for these mini drones. Now, once I actually started playing with the speed settings, I realized that that was the reason why I was getting such juddery movement. Now, when I adjusted the speed to 3.5 meters per second, as opposed to the default eight meters per second, or even going up to 5.5 meters per second, the movements were so much smoother and it was really amazing to see like, all of the footage I got here was usable. There were a few occasional little juddery movements, but I found that no matter what I put the drone through, as long as I had that speed setting underneath 5.5, as long as it was like 3.5, 4, 4.55, or 5.5, it seemed to really handle it well. And I guess if I'm to compare it to that eight meters per second, which is the default, it just does an amazing job at those lower speed settings. I tried a few different things with the waypoint mode here. I was in the one location, but I just wanted to change the path, change the height, and just kind of change what the drone was doing to see what I could capture. Now, I got some really impressive shots. Like I said, I got some cool revealing shots, which is cool. I love it when you're focused on something that's like nice and close to you. And then as you're moving away, the actual camera adjusts and kind of reveals the environment. Now, to me, this was amazing because it was a very dynamic movement something that's very hard to capture on your own. And it's nice that you can capture nice smooth revealing shots with the waypoints mode. The other thing that really impressed me is when you actually set up a waypoint mission, by default, it actually sets up the curved path from waypoint to waypoint. So that means as it's going around a corner, instead of going up to the end of that waypoint and then turning on a dime, which is a lot more robotic, a lot more kind of unnatural movement, I guess. I like it that it actually creates a curved path as you reach the waypoint on a corner, which which actually does create a nice smooth movement. And you can see a lot of the shots that I'm, I'm showcasing here. You can see it does a really good job of turning the corners. Occasionally you get like a little bit of an awkward movement that doesn't look amazing. But from most of my tests I did, pretty much all of them were usable and did create a very unique viewing angle. I set up a point of interest for all of my tests just so I could see how the drone and the actual camera system would operate and to see if it would create some dynamic movements. And like I said before, if you've got something focused in the foreground and then the drone moves away, it will actually slightly move the camera to create a really cool revealing shot. But the other thing that I thought was really cool is that me as the pilot, I could control the tilt of the camera. So there was a point where there was a canoe underneath me. There were a group of people that really wanted me to film them going out. So I set that waypoint up on the fly pretty much. I used the drawing tool because then when you use the drawing tool, you can actually set up all of the settings to be the same. So I literally just set it so the speed was the exact same. The height was the same. I think I set it at 30 meters and the speed I think was five meters per second. And then from there, the drone literally just did its thing. They were canoeing and I was able to have control of the camera. So I could tilt down and have a really cool revealing shot as they went underneath the drone. So again, this is a really cool thing to do. Yes, you could do that manually if you really wanted, but the fact that I could do that with a waypoint mission and have some usable footage, all I had to worry about was tilting the camera smoothly. Just the fact that it was that set speed for me and all I had to do was tilt the camera actually did create a really nice shot, but it also made it a lot easier for me as the pilot. As I mentioned just before, you have the drawing tool, which makes it really easy because you can literally just draw on the map and then it will set up the waypoints based on what you've drawn. The fact that you then also have, I guess, like a default setting for all of the waypoints then is really easy to set it up on the fly. If you do want to individually set them though, you can do that as well. And that then gives you control to then tap on each individual one and change the height, change the way it, I guess, responds or reacts in those situations. And that's really cool as well. 
I really liked how the mission performed when I set it up flying towards the lighthouse at Cleveland. What I did was I incrementally increased the height. So I went from 30 to 35, 35 to 40, 40 to 45, and so on. And I basically got it up to the point that I tried to reveal the lighthouse. So I had the lighthouse or that point at Cleveland. I had that as my point of interest. And then I literally just set a path where I was slowly increasing my altitude just to see how that would look. And it's really cool to see that you know, from one point to the other, it calculates it and gets it right to 35. And then as it continues, it then slowly goes to 40, then to 45 and so on until it gets up to 55 meters. And then from there, it's yeah, really cool to see how it would actually turn the corner and reveal the lighthouse. So again, the fact that I had those speed settings a bit slower made the shot a lot more usable. It made it actually look really cool. You know, something that I would probably use in something on YouTube or in other sort of video forms. I think it just did a really cool job. And again, nice and easy to do. This one was really fun because I had to individually set up the waypoints and uh, just see how it performed. And again, really cool to see how well it did. You can see that as it approaches the lighthouse, the point of interest is that middle point. So I didn't make the lighthouse the point of interest, but I made the middle of the point, basically, the point of interest. So you can see that as the drone's starting to turn, you can see that it's actually doing a really cool job of revealing that middle piece. And the camera itself is adjusting based on that point of interest. So again, you as the pilot, you have full control to customize these settings and you know, you can change the point of interest, you can change where the camera is going to be looking and all those things, but just leaving it as a default, it still did a fantastic job. And I found that just the overall experience again was great. Once it had completed the waypoint, it then continued to return to home, which at that point I could be viewing the map to try to figure out what I wanted my next waypoint to be. Gives me a chance, you know, to glance up at the drone, make sure it's fine, look down at the controller to plan the next mission and figure out where I'm going to fly. And then by the time the drone comes back, I pause that return to home and then it's just hovering in the sky ready for my next mission. The first mission I did was kind of creating a U formation around uh, where all the boats depart from. And I set this up in a way that you know I, I wanted to see how it would go around the corner and how it would go tracking side on because I found that when I've done previous tests I found either if I was moving side on or in a weird direction that maybe is really hard for the software to communicate with the drone I found that that's where those weird movements would come in so I really wanted to make sure that I had it nice and slow so I had it at 3.5 meters per second I also set up the waypoints in a way that there was a bit of distance between them and the point of interest I find that if the waypoints and the point of interest are too close, you can also get some weird jerky movement. But again, in this scenario, when I set it up as 3.5 meters per second, which is a lot slower than the default 8 meters per second, it was able to do a really great job. Like it was still relatively close to the point of interest, but it was able to create like a nice orbit shot almost. It was kind of like a semi orbit. It went around in a U formation. And then as it went around the side, it was then tracking on the side and it was still doing amazingly well you know it went from waypoint to waypoint and created a really smooth movement that is actually usable like this is a really cool shot something that you would probably struggle to get on your own and the fact that it's so smooth and natural and it just looks like a very professional revealing shot you know it looks like an orbit almost is just so cool like i love the fact that we have that control now and that power you will see actually in my first test i only set the first waypoint as the 3.5 and then the others were the default eight. And that's where you can see some of those jankier, more awkward movements. But then I do a test again where I set everything at 3.5 and you can see that it's just a smoother experience and it looks so much better. Another thing that I noticed, which again, I think is related to the speed settings is when the drone was flying sideways or even if it was flying backwards. So if the point of interest was in front of the drone and I was getting it to fly backwards and keep the front of the drone, the actual focus point, wherever I've set that point of interest, I found that it really struggled with those kind of movements. And particularly, like I said, going around corners and flying on the side. But straight when I set all of the waypoints to 3.5, you can see I reset all the waypoints to 3.5 just to see how it's going to perform. And again, amazing job, like straight when that speed setting is more reasonable and like more of a gradual, slower paced kind of flight. I found that the revealing shots, the orbiting shots and everything just looked so much better. So after multiple tests and playing around with the drawing mode, as well as the individual waypoint planner, you know, setting up point of interest and having a little bit of customization in the settings, mainly the speed setting was the one I really wanted to play with. Uh, like I said, with the lighthouse one, I adjusted the altitude of each waypoint just to see how that would look. And overall, it was 
flawless. Besides when I had the eight meters per second, which again, you kind of saw a little bit of that janky movement. And to me, that makes no sense to be the default setting if that just looks clunky and awkward. They should make the default five meters per second if that looks a lot smoother. That's just my opinion though. That's something that I would love your thoughts in the comments below. Um, but for people out there that are struggling to create these smoother waypoints, I would suggest playing around with the speed settings. A few people actually left comments on previous videos telling me about that. So I do appreciate uh, all those comments and support to help me improve my videos and improve my coverage of different applications. So now that I've got Lightchi to the point that I actually feel confident in capturing smooth waypoints, I think it's honestly well worth your time. If you have an Air 2S and you want to unlock waypoints, this video here proves that you can capture some really smooth footage with your drone and do something very unique here. So anyway, that is the end of this video. Again, very impressed by how Lightchi performed with the Air 2S. I'd love your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know how you're going with your Air 2S. If you do have Lightchi, if you do have the Mini 2 or the Mini SE and you've got Lightchi as well, let me know how you're going with those different drones because it's always fascinating to hear different experiences with the same application. But that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you in the next one and peace out. I'm running you away, but you push me away. Your life blind, losing, ooh, losing your mind. I'm here for you, babe. I've loved you the same this whole time.